Welcome, friends of the show. We are back with another episode of the Ferris Wheel Serious Rock Talk Podcast. Oh, all right. A big thanks for your emails, suggestions, and your support on our social media platforms. Continue to email us at SeriousRockTalk at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Listen to a new show every week. Just tune in each Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. New York City time on Cap City Beats, located at www.capcitybeats.ca. Okay, buckle up for some serious rock talk. <laughs> and the man to the left of me needs no introduction, but he's a huge, huge Doors fan. Uh... Really? I forgot my... Yeah, I've never heard of the... I'm sorry. The door, That's an Ian Clark? <laughs> and the man to the right of me, huge Pink Floyd fan. Huge Pink Floyd The lunatic is on the grass. <laughs> and does not oh. like Uma Guma that much. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Wheeler. All right. So, gentlemen, today actually is... Uh, I'm going to start off with a few anniversaries. Ian, happy 60th anniversary to the Rolling Stones 2022. They are 60 years... Is that right? That's oh, 1962, I guess. Yeah, You're right. 60 years. I think I it was 1862. <laughs> well, it looks like <laughs> the Rolling Bones, yeah. So, 19, yeah, so 1962 is when they were incarnated. And, uh, Good Lord. They've been around for 60 years. Also, 2022, and especially today, is the 50th anniversary of Exile on Main Street, 1972. Mm, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Another good news, Ian. Roger Waters is bringing his 1980s The Wall Tour. Stop. That's what he said. It's overrated. <laughs> Stop. And We uh, don't need no... It. It's over. <laughs> we don't need another tour. But he's bringing the 1980s one. I don't know what the oh, hell that means. Stop it. And then the other piece of news, money. Sir Paul McCartney will now be known as Lord Paul McCartney. The Queen is going to, how do you, Lord him? Or in French, he's going to be our seigneur. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he make it up himself? From now on, you'll call me Lord. I mean, it's something you could do. No, it was My announced sweet on, Lord. Yeah, it was oh, announced please. on the radio. Yeah, he's going <laughs> to. It's a good thing George is no longer there. <laughs> I know, but John would have. I see, I knew it was going to upset him. Right? <laughs> well, it's just for Paul. Listen, I've been seeing some of the YouTube. I'm glad he's in a way going out there, but wow, like uh, he, he's an old guy. He's 80, but he's almost 80, and uh, these are rock songs. I like the duet he sang with his, with Lennon. That's cool. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think I've got a feeling they sing it as a duet. It shows Lennon the screen behind him. Kind of creepy, but cool. And now I'll turn it off to my man here. And what's our topic today? The top classic. Uh, rock artists of from all time. ultimate classic rock. What the top hundred, top fifty, what top hundred, top hundred, and you want to go from one to one hundred? Uh, under suggestion of my doctor, Doctor Ian know, Clark. I think so. I think it's more interesting because we all know number one, two. All right. And for those who wonder what Ian is a doctor of, he's a proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> and why? Because I enjoy variety. <laughs> That's an old joke. <laughs> Welcome to Kennedy's Corner. Following the advice of a behavioral psychologist, Ferris Kennedy has created a form to express his nightmares, his terror, and his love of rock music. Dr. Clark and medicated Wheeler help with his therapy by answering questions, or just acting like they're interested. We are uh, doing a special Kennedy's Corner today uh, in Lou of the top 100 and I had this Matilda written down and I said you know what why not do it on this show sure which makes sense and I have titled it uh, which order do they rank I'm going to list three artists in each line and you're going to tell me it's either you're going by the facts or you're going by personal opinion or you just you say you know what yeah this is what it should be okay and it's going to be rank them one two or three so I'll start off with you kind sir okay uh <clears throat> Dave Gilmore, Dave Navarro, Dave Grohl. Okay. Uh, These are the Daves I know, I know. These <laughs> are the Daves I know. <laughs> so I'd go uh, just for the sheer variety uh, of what he can do, a Grohl as one. Uh, Gilmore is two. What was Navarro. The, Navarro as three. All right. Uh, <laughs> Gordon Downey, Gordon Sumner, Gordon Lightfoot. 
Uh, Downey Lightfoot Sumner. Okay. George Michael, George Harrison, George Jones. <laughs> Harrison Jones, uh, Michael? Michael? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Taylor Hawkins, Taylor Hansen, Taylor Swift. <laughs> What do you mean? Who would you like to date? Oh, Taylor Swift there only. Go. There you go. <laughs> uh, Taylor Hawkins, Taylor Swift, and... Uh, Taylor Hansen. Taylor Hansen. Okay. Uh, Pete Best, Pete Townsend, Pete Torque. Townsend, Torque, and... Best. Best. John Michael, Ozzy Osbourne, John Paul Jones, John Bonham. Wow. And it, it's testing my short-term memory, which is really horrible. <laughs> it, appears, it appears to be. Uh, so, Ozzy won. Uh, can, you, can you give me the other two? John Paul Jones, John Bonham. John Bonham and John Paul Jones. Chad Kroger, Chad Smith, Chad Channing. Chad Kroger. Well, in, in that exact order, actually. All right. <laughs> Steve Winwood, Steve Van Zant, Steve Vai. Ooh. Vi, uh, Van Zepp, and... Winwood. Winwood. Win-win. Stuart Sutcliffe, Stuart Copeland, Stuart Cook. Copeland... Uh, Cook. Oh. Yeah, Cook. And uh, then Sutcliffe last. Sutcliffe, okay. yeah. Roger Meadows Taylor from Queen, Roger Andrew Taylor from Duran Duran, or Roger McGuinn from The Birds. I go with the bands Queen, <laughs> Queen Birds, and Duran Duran. Okay. Brian Adams, Brian May, Brian Jones. Uh, Brian Adams, Brian Jones, Brian May. Wow, I would never put Brian Jones before May, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> Freddie Mercury, Fred Schneider, Fred Durst. Oh, Ooh. Fred Durst is not even in the top three. Uh, Freddie Mercury and uh, Fred. Fred Schneider from the Beef Schneider, yeah. Okay. Anthony Kiedis, Anthony Ted Nugent, and Anthony Calabreta. <laughs> uh, I just can't stand uh, Nugent. Oh, you're so. okay. Yeah, okay. So he's your last? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so Kiedis, Calabreta, Nugent. Kiedis and... Uh, what, what's Calabreta. It? Calabreta. Uh, Phil Linet, Phil Collins, Phil Spector. Collins, Spector. Linet. Uh, Linet. John Denver, John Fushante, John Lydon. Fushante, Denver, Lydon. James Hetfield, James Taylor, James Brown. Well, that's hard, man. <laughs> um, a Brown has to come first because he's God. He's God. <laughs> uh, Taylor and... Hetfield. Hetfield. All right. And that's done for you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Ian? Yes, how may I help you? Don Felder, Don Fagan, Don Henley. Uh, I would go Don Hen. Oh no, I'm gonna go with Fagan, Henley, and Felder. All right, Steve Tyler, Steve Perry, Steve Stevens. In that order. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Here's a good one. Roger Waters, Roger Hodgson, Roger Daltrey. I would do that in the reverse order with Daltrey first. Daltrey, Hodgson, Waters. Yeah, he gives his like Waters too much. He's an irritating personality. Uh, Billy Joel, Billy Idol, or Billy Joel Armstrong? Uh, in that order. Okay. Yeah, sure. John Lennon, John Fogarty, John Mellencamp. Definitely in that order. <laughs> Keith Richards, Keith Moon, Keith Scott. In that order. Yeah. Joe Perry, Joe Satriani, Joe Walsh. Hmm. I would put Walsh in the middle. Uh, yeah. Um, let me think. That's a good... Uh, Satriani's pretty amazing, though. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll put Walsh in the middle, Satriani at the end. All right. Uh, Neil Young, Neil Diamond, Neil Pert. Well, yeah, you're playing off me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> look, uh, Neil Diamond <laughs> is underrated, so I'll put him first. But Neil Young second. Neil Young. N- Neil Perth third. All right. Uh, Steve Miller, Steve Adler, Steve Wright. So Miller obviously is from his band, Adler yeah. from GNR, and Wright from Floyd. Am I correct, Wills? Yep. You? Um, I'm going in that order. Steve Miller's an influential guy. He's a good, good songwriter. 
Michael Fleabalziri, Michael Anthony, Michael Hutchins. Oh, I flipped that around. Yeah, Hutchins first. Hutchins first? Yeah, sure. And it's ass, baby. Peter Gabriel, Peter Green, Peter Frampton. Well. I love when I stump Yeah, I mean, one. Peter Green is so influential. Like, yeah, I had kind of uh, a soft spot for his life. But he was a mean sweet with Mac, right? So I'm going to go with Green and uh, Peter Frampton. Yeah, I guess so. I'll go Frampton second. So Green, Frampton, Gabriel? Yeah. Okay. Mick Jagger, Mick Fleetwood, Mick Taylor. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'll go on. The, uh, I will uh, go with Jagger, and I'll number two. I'm gonna put in uh, Mick Taylor, then Mick Fleetwood. David Bowie. Yeah. David Lee Roth. David Crosby. Oh man. Yeah, wow. I'll go David Bowie. Uh, David Crosby. David Lee Roth. Kim Mitchell. Kim Thile. Kim Carnes. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, good. The Revenge of the Kims. I'll go with that order. Sure. Robert Plant, Robert Palmer, Robert Johnson. Oh, well, I mean, wow. That covers <laughs> every 1930s. Thing. Um, uh, I like Robert Palmer. Uh, probably, yeah, I'm going to go be controversial. I'll take Palmer over, uh, over Led Zeppelin. All right. And the last one for you. Bob Dylan, Bob Seeger, Bob Marley. Mm, I'll go with Bob Dylan, uh, Bob Marley, Bob Seeger. <laughs> I thought he would do that. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what I have. Uh, that sounds good. That was interesting. Yeah. You worked on that. That <laughs> <I> was good. <laughs> that was good. I enjoyed it. That, that being said, I think I have Alzheimer's based on this <laughs> test. <laughs> Believe me, it was. I figured I would play on the Don. Yeah. Yeah. The Keats. You know. Kaif's, yeah. The K- Kaif, what does he call him? Kaif? K-E-E-F, Kaif. Yeah, his, his Twitter handle is official, Kaif. Oh, Lord. Oh, good. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. That was good. So, uh, wheels. Let's talk a look at the list, yeah, baby. Let's talk about this list. So, based on, on the doctor's recommendation, which I agree with. Yeah, to make it interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go the other way, because... Frankly, you, the top five, everybody probably You would guessed. have guessed it after 10 beers even. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. so obvious. So, number one, The Beatles. Number two, The Stones. Number three, Led Zeppelin. Number four, Jimi Hendrix. And number five, Bob Dylan. Blah, 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 blah. Anyone can, Even if you hate music, you could pull this out, right? Well, let me ask you this. I don't know. What? Hendrix is ranked too high. I'm sorry. And is Bob Dylan a rocker? No, no. So right. we, why we is do, he I doing do. there? I don't know. He's a folk singer. It's so. just me, like you know, like I've no, I completely Hendrix, agree. But I just, I know. Hendrix. You're putting like three friggin' icons. Like, put the doors. Put, you well, know. Well, like many lists, there's no parameters that we know of to begin with. It's just uh, an opinion, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the way we're deconstructing this by going from number one down. Usually, people go the other way, and you can see how bizarre some of these choices are. Like putting the Beatles before, or rather, I don't know, Hendrix before, I don't know, Floyd. the Who or something. It doesn't make mm. any sense. Anyway, All so right. we did the first five. All, All right. right. So six is Pink Floyd, seven Van Halen, eight David Bowie, nine Elton John, ten Bruce Springsteen. Really? Hey, we'll stop there. Bruce Springsteen, they're putting above 90 other bands and people. Keep that in mind. We shall continue. But no, and I agree with you. You know what I mean? Like 90 other Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, okay, I guess. Which I'm thinking, it makes me think this list was done by somebody who lives in New Jersey. Yeah, really good. No, but look at, no, they would have put Bon Jovi there. Um, No, true, yeah. At the end of the day, you got Van Halen. Okay, Van Halen made the top 10. I'm happy with that. Of course. Mm. You know, but I would honestly, I would have put both Floyd and Van Halen in the top five. Did you do a self, <laughs> a self uh, <clears throat> done a proctological? Oh, please, <laughs> yeah. All right, Van fine. Halen in the top five. So how come Neil Young is number eleven, Ian? What's going on there? Yeah, really. So Neil Young is better than the Who <laughs> and CCR, Black Sabbath, The Kinks, and The Doors. Stop it. In that what? order. I, I, In that I, I, order. So stop the insanity, as they used to say. I, well, in this case, I think it's mostly due to the fact that he, he was part of like really seminal bands at seminal times, I think. Yeah, I guess so. But still, is it, I can't go there. I won't work with that. There's All no right. way. Are you okay with ACDC at 17 and the police at 18? 
Uh, uh, we did, did you mention the Kinks at 15? Oh, yeah. The kinks, the kinks. The Kinks and the Doors. So um, the Kinks before the Doors, really? Or ACDC. Or ACDC, really? Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Lola? Hello, <laughs> Ellie. But yeah, I agree with that. But then the next one after ACDC is the police. So the police <laughs> outrank 72 other bands. Wait till we get to those and you start groaning on the floor like I am. Like the, then you got The Clash and Metallica comes in at number 20. 20. So The Police are better than Metallica and The Clash. Yeah. But not as good as... Uh, sorry, but Metallica is better than Aerosmith and the band? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a Metallica Let's fan, but still, I, 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 I can say they suck compared to Aerosmith and the band. Metallica is metal. They, it and is. They, and they changed metal. They, they, did, they did metal right, okay? True. But but in terms of legend, uh, living legends, I mean the band should be in the top ten. Years. Exactly. I mean, really, the, so the band's number twenty-two, and I'm looking back on the list, and Bruce Springsteen's number ten, and Aerosmith is twenty-one, and Bruce Springsteen's so, number ten. Okay, so that makes a whole bunch of sense. And then you got Fleetwood Mac and Tom Petty, twenty-three, twenty-four. So in other words, Tom Petty is better than seventy-six. Seventy-six <laughs> other people are worse than Tom. Petty, and those people who include people will get them like, oh, I don't know, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, Santana, uh, I don't know. But come on, hey, these are the guy did this on uh, mushrooms or something. <laughs> so they got Tom Petty better than Cream at 25. Oh, Your favorite stay, band of all time. Stop right there. <laughs> better than Queen at 26. Better than Guns N' Roses at 27. <laughs> and ZZ Top, who actually gained. Their, most of their fame just in the state of Texas <laughs> alone, which is similar to what Elvis did in the States. Well, that's right, baby. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Billy Joel is 29. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he's rock and roll. No, exactly. He's, he's like a, a lounge singer. guy. And he yeah. beat Clapton <laughs> by one. <laughs> like, the man the, whose name sounds like something you have to treat with penicillin. Yeah, really. And they got Rush ranked at 31. All right, everyone knows my with Rush, but okay, listen. They should be put down a little bit. Yeah, closer to 50. Well, I don't know. How's no, this? They, they were a little bit more influential, but yeah. John okay. Fogarty's 85 and Rush is 31. Like, <laughs> that, you can't even conceive that. It goes beyond any kind of uh, sensibility or logic. So Leonard Skinner got beat out by Rush and Tom Petty. And, <laughs> and Tom Petty. The, and great, <laughs> the Grateful Dead. That'd be John Lennon, really. Yeah, really. So Don Petty over John Lennon. And Crosby Stills. The Nash, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the Eagles. The guy who did this must have driven a stake into his head. The Almond Brothers Blues. So the Almond Brothers band are worse, are ranked lower Lord. than Tom Petty. <laughs> you have to change religions to get into this. There is no God, obviously. Of course. Steely Dan, number 38. Deep Purple, 39. Uh... 40s Paul McCartney. Really? Really? So Tom Petty is better than Paul, Paul McCartney. McCartney. No, this is worse. The guy, ooh, I am sitting down, thank God. <laughs> Who comes after Paul McCartney? The Cars. Okay. My best friend's <laughs> girlfriend. The Cars are one down from Paul McCartney. Like, he, there shouldn't even be on the list if there were 200 people. The Cars are 41. The Ramones, 42. Two. Yeah, the Cars beat the Ramones. And Genesis. And, Genesis. and, Genesis. and, Genesis. and Kiss. Well, and you don't like Kiss. I don't like Kiss, but, but now I kind of like them. <laughs> because anything to shake up this list. Cheap Trick is 45. They could stay there. I yeah. guess out of mercy. Because Cheap Trick beat out Yes. And Bob Seger. <laughs> well, Yes is like a seminal band. Like, it just... And Journey, I've always had issues with Journey, but they're 48, Hearts 49, 50, Rod Stewart. Okay. Paul McCartney, Tom Petty <laughs> beat out Rod, Rod Stewart. Stewart. By like 100%. Like he's just, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Jackson Brown comes in at 51. He's not even rock. No, he's like a singer-songwriter. Yeah, like, he's a West Coast. Co I have seen the uh, deaf, oh, and we got, oh, Janis Joplin. Which is beat by heart, which, again, doesn't yeah, make that sense. doesn't make any sense. Def Leppard got beat up. I still can't believe Def Leppard got beat up by Tom Petty. <laughs> Just... <laughs> and Billy Joel. And Billy Joel. <laughs> On the and same... the Grateful Dead. Which... And the Cars. And the Cars. <laughs> the Cars beat deaf leopard and jefferson it. airplane for god's sake and, be, yeah. <laughs> and judas priest who just got inducted yeah. and they're going to be inducted finally in the rock and roll hall of fame 
Who we got next? Iron uh, Maiden. Uh, oh, so we got a real run here on uh, metal. So we got Iron Maiden, Santana. So Tom Petty will come back to is <laughs> number twenty four, and Santana is fifty seven. So Tom Petty is our, our barometer right now. That <laughs> exactly. We're he is because I can't. We can't. Clear, clear Tom palette. Petty beat out George Third Harrison <laughs> and Ozzy. Oh God! And listen, after Ozzy comes Boston. Okay, Boston. Should one album. That's one it. album, and then he, he's an engineer. Tom Schultz. Oh, stop! Alice Cooper. So Tom Petty beat out Alice <laughs> yeah, Cooper, Cooper and Stevie Nicks and Steve Miller. You can't fathom this. And Rush is hanging on the number 31 like a wet sock. And Sticks. <laughs> Rush beat out Sticks. Stick. So I guess Renegade, no one cares for it. Apparently. John Mellon in the head is in at 65. Um, actually, that might be okay, but it's not okay that he beat out Peter Gabriel. Or Robert, Robert Plant. Plant. Plant is a rock god. Like him or not, he is one of the gods. And the Doobie Brothers. Doobie's been around since like 1921. Like they've done a lot of stuff. Lou Reed, okay, love him or leave him, I'm okay. Foreigner is number 71. You forgot the Jeff Will Tell though. No, you didn't. <laughs> he didn't. Sitting on a park <laughs> bench. That's all they got. Snot running break. down his yeah. yeah. locomotive breath. Okay, so Jeff Will Tell got beat out by Tom Petty. <laughs> and Rush and the Cars and the Cars and, the cars. and number forty-one. Foreigner, I can keep. For, you know what? Ah, they're okay. Yeah, yeah, they're they're good at seventy-one, I guess. Uh, Buffalo Springfield seventy-two. Every this one of those bands that people kind of it has a hipster quality to it. They only know usually one song for what it's worth, um, and they don't know anything else. But it's one of those bands that's hip to like. Yeah, it's hip to be that. square. Pardon me. <laughs> it's hip to be square. Oh, yeah, <laughs> really. No, no, no. Yeah, they're not though. They should be. Dire Straits. Yeah, I'm okay with that. ELO, like regular Orchestra, 74. Uh, I'm glad they're on the list. I always thought they were underrated. But, um, yeah, I'm glad they're there. They're good songs in the 70s, right? Exactly. So. And I love the description they gave them to themselves. Uh, their early mantra was to pick up where I am the walrus left off. I know. I mean, that that just sounds That's good. That's ballsy doing that. Yeah. Even mentioning the Beatles. But, I mean, it destroyed the knack. Everybody knows my Sharon, and that's what destroyed them. They tried to market them as the Beatles, even with the same album cover stuff. And oh, what a disaster! Uh, so we got '76 Motley Crue. So Motley Crue beat Sammy seven, Hagar, beat Sammy Hagar, and beat, Phil like, Collins and Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, hold on, but Tom Petty beat out Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And Billy no, Joel, seriously, Billy Joel beat Motley Crue and rock and rock and roll. <sighs> Bad Company. Yeah, good band. Um, I'm okay. Faces, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm there. Uh, but again, then we got John, John Bon Jovi at 81. Uh, I guess uh, Ringo, Don Henley at 82, and the Beatles and the Eagles are at 36. But I have a problem with Ringo beating Bachman Turner Overdrive. I know. It's, God bless him. He's a Beatle, right? You can't do anything. Yeah, you could put him in 99. <laughs> John Fogarty. So in other words, Billy Joel beat out John Fogarty. Fogarty. And so did Rush. Rush is at 31. John effing Fogarty is at 85. And we are talking about a rock list. Uh, okay. I mean, it's really? And then right behind that, you've got what? Uh, Ted Nugent at 86. Um, I guess... Motor, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer. Yeah, they were influential. Love them. Again, I love them, hate them. They were an influential prog band in the 70s, and they were all excellent musicians. The Moody Blues, 1960s band. They just stay there. Oh, yeah, yeah. No one's going to push them up. Well, Motorhead's 89, and yet we've got some of the, like Iron Maiden's 56. These are that, and Judas Priest is 55. That's really debatable. All right, Motorhead, Lemmy. So. Oh. Maybe, maybe not. But it's funny, those three bands, Judas Priest, Mortarhead, and Maiden, are all British metal. Yep. Yeah, it's true. And there's a big difference, apparently, between the UK metal versus the you know North American one. I, I think it's due to the fact that a lot of these bands came along. These guys actually had musical training in school, whereas they had already cut that in the States. So there's, they have more of a taught through musical background i'd say it's the same thing like with prog when prog rock came out came out of uh britain 
Yeah. You could hear the influence that these, these guys had training in school. They had heard a lot of music from a lot of different fields. And it did bring something else to... Uh, same That's thing true. with like electronic music. Like Electronic music from France and Germany doesn't sound... It, no, it, it's it, true. It's not the same plan. Craft like, work or something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah good point. And then lyrics to the Prague English band. The lyrics were always the same about some beautiful blonde dams going through a meadow in sunlight and it, it was so identifiable as british you know? exactly back to, you know. they, they probably all smoked weed while reading the hobbit yeah good point. <laughs> yeah that's well done yeah uh who else we got peter uh, frampton so motorhead beat out peter frampton <laughs> and <laughs> chicago could stay there I, I'm yeah, okay. 91 james gang i'm okay with that Thin Lizzy, 93. I'm glad they made the list. I'm glad Traffic made it at 94. Steve Winwood. But beat by the James Gang, really? Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> built by Billy Joel. And yeah, exactly. No. Or, or Tom uh, Petty. <laughs> Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I wouldn't even probably put them in the top 100. But Stevie Ray. Stevie Ray Vaughan probably should move up that list. He was so good. It was pitiful. He was so good he made it look easy. But it's not hard. It's hard to play that well. So Jeff Beck, Jeff Beck, ninety-seven. Um, I don't think people know what to do with Jeff Beck. I agree that he's difficult to place because he doesn't seem to have. He's over all the genres like jazz, everything. He doesn't have the discipline. Anyway, Ronnie James Dio. Well, and, Billy Idol beat out Ronnie James. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Again, I have okay. a problem with that. I do you? have a problem. Oh yeah, with come on, Dio and Billy Idol. Don't not exactly the same league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a different. I always thought Billy Idol was more of like a, like an entertainer. He's a pop guy. Yeah, he's really. a pop guy. He's at the leather, and he's got the young. Know, I, I got the little snarl and bleached hair. Uh, and Scorpions come in at a hundred. God bless who made the list. Including... Why did they even make the list? I don't see. Yeah, I mean, all to people... piss us off, really. <laughs> yeah, really. So, ladies and gentlemen, make Beach it. Beach Boys didn't make it. That's a really good point. Like, I don't... I mean, interesting bands from the 60s and 70s didn't make it either. So, I don't know. What about the Bee Gees? They're I mean, not on they, there. They're not on there, right? But if, you, if you're going to include Billy Joel, uh, you may as well include the Bee Gees. Wow, what's the big... You know, it's easy listening, yada, yada, yada. So, Stevie Nicks, same thing. They couldn't... They, but no, they put her on there. She's on the list, Stevie Nicks. No, I, mean, I know, but I'm saying they are there. Why aren't the Bee Gees? Oh, yeah. So I mean, no, they're not just disco. They some great albums before Saturday Night Fever. To be honest, and I, after, I and after, yeah. I would have put, um, I would, I would honestly would have put Hugh Lewis on there just because it was a, a different kind of like rock. Yeah, it was feel good, upbeat, positive rock. People were so tired of the negative stuff. And Hugh Lewis came along. On a new drug. Oh well, yeah, he's uh, so wholesome. There's no Nirvana on this list. There's no Foo Fighters, Pearl Jam. They left out, you yeah. know, grunge that has kind of crossed over. Yeah. Into cl- into rock, I guess. So that's kind of interesting that they didn't put those. Well, Nirvana on. should be on this list. Come on. Even even they didn't put the Sex Pistols on there. Mm, yeah. One yeah. album. One album, really. Especially yeah. one album. So I don't know. Are they influential? Hard to say. Are they a pop culture that has made something in? Me? Of course, yes. Yeah, you can't deny that. Can't deny it. You know, but they, you know, there's a. I don't know, man. Yeah, Nirvana's on the list. Foo Fighters are not on the list. And okay, it's fine. I get it. Maybe they were saying, well, they're more considered grunge. Sound grunge and make the list. Yeah, but you know, they're including Billy Joel <laughs> and then they're t- two off. It's Guns N' Roses. Billy Joel has nothing in common. With no Joel. chili peppers? No, no chili no, peppers. Exactly. So, I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you have your own list, but this is our, our comments. Three guys commenting on this list. We love doing it. We should probably make our own list. Yeah, we really should someday. I think. Yeah, but there'll be blood on this uh, on this no, desk. I guess there could <laughs> no, be. our list I think combined together. Yeah, of course. With our musical tastes, because King Crimson's on here. Uh, well, I think they made it, didn't they? Didn't they like around? We we went through this really quickly. Uh, Court of the Crimson. You're, you're you're probably right, actually. I mean, you have a better right. short-term memory than I do. And what's the one that? Uh, oh, what's his name there? Not the guy from Yes. What, what's the other? David Byrne. Oh, um, oh, Talking Heads. Talking yeah, Heads. Good point. No I mean, Talking Heads. Uh, did they even put in excess on that list? Nope. No. In excess on the list. Midnight Oil didn't even make the list. True. Yeah. Uh, Men at Work. Ian, they were around for a while. Yeah, they were. You know. No. They're, 
you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure we're Billy about. Joel. <laughs> That's the thing. Like every time we have this band, we're not sure. Then we say Billy Joel. <laughs> well, because he's just, a, oh, you know, New York State of Mind uh, and going against a child of mine. I mean, it's just, it's, it's like comparing a symphony with a rap song. Yeah, like the music, but, you know. Like, they, you know, the Guess Who's not even on there. Guess Who's not on there. Who else? Though? You know, if you really want to get modern rock, the hip, yeah. they weren't even on there. Aretha uh, Franklin's not on there. I mean, if you're going to cross over genres, where's she? Lady Soul. Like, like most of Motown, really. Jimmy Jim yeah. Brown was not No Stevie Wonder? Yeah, we're Stevie Wonder. So, anyway. No MJ? If you're going crossover. Good point. Again, Good point. yeah. No Michael Jackson. The Elvis, or the or Elvis just Jackson. Five. On hey, what's going on? Yeah, no, no, no Sinatra if you're crossing over. Yeah, really. It's just a bogus list, anyway, ladies and gentlemen. But the only of- thing we'll answer to that is doobie doobie doo. <laughs> Ever since that night. But the beauty about the Beatles being number one brings me back to I listen to all their vinyls yeah. from the finish to the start so basically I went from oh, let, it be, let it be to that's masochistic pl- I to, to please please me oh yeah and let me tell you obviously it started off really good and then it's like you know, yeah kind of a little pop yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah I have to agree that whenever Len- uh, whenever McCartney took over that's when it got real for yeah. me yeah, okay, that's your uh, uh, toughest. I think I like Lennon's composing. I know the early songs are kind of irritating, uh, but I don't know. By but the they mid- weren't disparages of the time, anyways. They were great. I never really liked the early, I want to hold your hand, all that stuff. But I like that. You want to hold your gland, you didn't like that? I'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll censor that later. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Um, but by Revolver, yeah, those are great albums. And Lennon was still writing. But that's why I said he's masochistic, because he, go, uh, he goes from the, at well, their top shape to when they're young. Yeah, I know, and I know. Not completely shaped. Like it's... Look, there, look, uh, is there really a bad song of the Beatles? Except a good morning, good, good morning. morning. <laughs> Nothing to do, call who? Yeah, what a stupid but song. It, it's not really so much that there's no bad songs. Or, it's just that there's the some... early stuff is so popish that you have to be in a certain mood yeah you have to be in a certain mood it's no, there's no sincerity to it it wasn't meant to last no uh 60 years it was meant to last six months like so. you're, you're I, I think the only way to listen to that in its like purest form is you have to drink really sugary pop while <laughs> eating bubble gum and like with a hula hoop around your waist and hitting your head with a jackhammer maybe but yeah <laughs> that's the only way you'll do it but and speaking of which, there is a bit of a corner left unturned here um, that I am just kind of itching to hear. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, something I feel in my blood. You get any response to that? Yeah, like a vinyl scratch that you yeah, want it. <laughs> so you're going to talk about a band that hit 31 on the top list? Exactly. <laughs> Rush. <laughs> So Kennedy just bought a, uh, for a little while back. Was it a few months or a few weeks ago? I uh, uh, got it to probably a couple of months ago. Go, the yeah. uh, 2112 or Moving, pic- no, moving, moving pictures, pictures last year. So l- okay. late October, October of last year. 2021, I, I barreled down and went and buy Moving Pictures because, yes, everyone knows my you know loyal love-hate relationship with Rush. And I always said that Moving Pictures was their best album and I stand by it because it is their best album and I agree actually uh, but just to piss you off somebody somewhere decided to re-release Moving Pictures the 40th Anniversary uh, Edition did they know me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is really Rush at their peak this is Rush uh, having evacuated the late 70s more uh, like the the excesses of prog everywhere were found in Rush albums. I mean, they they had really good uh, stuff on Fly by Night or Closer to the Heart. Uh, but then again, you have like the ten minute the camera eye out there uh, that's pushing it for for some people. So when you get to moving pictures, you're at that little point where they've distilled the gold from the 70s and they they haven't gone into the excesses of the 80s and so rhythm's really good their instrumental chops are at their peak and you have things like Tom Sawyer which is going to become the mainstay of 
Exactly. So we're we're at peak rush really on this one. And on this album, it's everything's been cleaned. They've taken the best uh, tapes that they could find. And you're listening to a pristine vinyl because it, it's been uh, re-released uh, in a nice package. Uh, from what I've heard, again, uh, it's... Because well, sometimes there are certain runs out there that if you go on the internet, you'll learn. Like the last Ozzy, uh, the Nirvana, the Nevermind uh, that came out a few months ago. If you go on the internet, you'll hear these horror stories of people getting a scratch vinyl out of the the sleeve, literally. No way. Uh, yeah. Uh, so well, that bites because you're paying like how premium. Much? premium. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, so th- this will not be the case with this album. Uh, you have here some of the best song like some some of the stuff that actually hit top 40 which was for rush yeah. rather rare <laughs> sure is. uh and uh, there's uh, a lot of information this is vinyl at his best so you have your uh, lyric sheets you got the great pictures so i'd highly recommend okay. moving pictures 40th anniversary i uh, i'll give it a four out of five well, good for you well thank you that's very kind of you yes sir <laughs> four out of five that's pretty good well, it hits on it, so people know it. And um, yeah, I mean, this is the thing when you, they issue these kind of albums, they have to almost know there are sales in place, and so they tend to be, you know, the big albums of the seventies, sixties, seventies, and eighties, because as people like me, yourself, whatever, we have the original, which are all scratched up by now. I think Blondie reissued is, is reissuing par- uh, parallel lines because it's a great album, and why not? I'm sorry, it was reissued. So, so people like me would say, yeah, I love that album, but I lost it years ago, so I'll get it and get it in vinyl. Either that yeah. or you had a really horrible turntable back in the day. Yeah. Like, a, what was it, the porcelain arm, like in the in the uh, entertainment units? Yeah, they were basically, they knurled the album. Like, it, <laughs> it was good for one play. The, the wax would scrape off on the side. But yeah, so there's a whole bunch of reasons to get vinyl again. But yet, and but also, that's why that comment of yours that Nirvana had scratches. I mean, there's no excuse for that when these are thirty-five, forty, forty-five dollar albums. You, that's the whole point. It's not these little K tail cheap, ten gram cheapies. They're supposed to be really good, one fifties, you know. And um, there's no excuse for that. Plus, Completely agree. You take them back, and the poor record seller saddled with these things. Not the producer. He's got to send them back and stuff. It's not. It's not. It's no good. Anyway, thank you. That was great, man. That was fantastic. Great way to cap it off. And with that, we are done. I would say, say to, say bonsoir. Adios. Bye.